All right, look, I didn't want to tell you, but uh, I've fallen behind at work. I can't keep up. Uh, recently, they've, um, well, they've let a few people go. Every day, there are fewer and fewer people doing the same amount of work. They have me running the accounting department all by myself, and not management, no. And I haven't been promoted, and there's no one to manage. I do everything, the whole department. And that's not all. I'm also expected to take incoming calls because there's no receptionist, <laughs> fix the computers because there's no tech department, <laughs> fill customer complaints because there's no customer service, I'm in charge of the mailroom, the cafeteria, janitorial services, research and development. Last week, they let human resources go. The whole department. And I received a memo which actually I had typed myself because there's no secretary instructing me to read up on all government and local government guidelines. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm supposed to start mediating all employee disputes <laughs> and I have no idea what I'm doing. I would ask the legal department but as I haven't studied law I don't know what to ask myself. <laughs> And to top it all off, I have to take the managing director's dog out for a walk four times a day at regular intervals. He has stomach problems and he's on a very strict schedule. That's the managing director, not the dog. Oh, hang on. I've just remembered. Now I am the managing director. Tomorrow, I'll probably be the dog. Poor Ruth. I, I'd never seen someone dead before. No, actually, that's not true. There was someone. My dad's aunt. She was funny in the head. She thought she could flap her arms up and down and, and fly like a bird. He had her put away. <laughs> uh, but then, when she was older, Dad said she should come and live with us. Uh, well, we, we lived in a house in the country, in Essex. Dad thought she should end her days with a family and not in the loony bin. <laughs> it was an unusual house, tall and thin, and, and there were trees all around it. And there was a gap in those trees, and through that gap you could see the London to Colchester railway line. <laughs> oh, my old aunt, she loved to watch the trains go by, so they put her in the top room of the house so she could see the trains clearly. Uh, they locked the windows, of course. But then, one day, she managed to prise the window open. She crawled out onto the windowsill, flapped her arms up and down and jumped. Poor old darling. My ma'am rushed out and found her. Don't look! Don't look! she said. But of course I did. It, it wasn't nasty or frightening, just a... A funny bundle of clothes with arms and legs sticking out of it. <laughs> Me ma'am said it was a blessed release. She often said that about people dying. I suppose some people thought that she killed herself because we kept her locked up and were cruel to her. 
Perhaps some of them thought that she was trying to escape and she killed herself accidentally. <laughs> some of them knew the truth, of course. But perhaps there was someone in a train going from London to Colchester. And perhaps he looked out the window. And perhaps through a gap in the trees he saw an old lady in mid-air flapping her arms up and down. Mm. <laughs> well, just for a split second, I mean, as the train went past our house. Well, as he looked through the window at that man, he'd be amazed. He'd tell his friend, I just seen an old lady flying. Mm. So I suppose it actually happened. What she wanted, I mean. Perhaps she died happy. What do you think?